ओके गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू दूट्यूब यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ दूर पीडिया एंड इंजीनियर करियर पर चंडीगढ़ सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू दी सम मोस्ट पीपल क्वेश्चन सीरीज ऑफ दी टर्बो मिशन पार्ट विच कैन बी फ्रिक्वेंटली आज इन दी ऑल इंडिया एग्जाम ओके सो बेसिकली यू हैव ऑलरेडी नो दैट ऑल इंडिया लिमिटेड हैज रिलीज आर वैकेंसी फॉर द मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर ओके एंड द क्वेश्चन पेपर इज वेरी इजी बेसिकली ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द टेक्निकल पोर्शन ओके ओनली फॉर दी फ्लूड मशीनरी पार्ट and the question which i am going to cover is basically a very important question from that particular point of exam point of view okay so you have to pay very, very careful attention to this okay okay so first of all just before starting the lecture just uh, please join the lecture as soon as possible so then we uh, then we will start our lecture so i'm waiting for few minutes then i will start the lecture okay so let us start so basically uh, as you know that hydraulic machine is a very important subject for any uh, for any for any technical exam okay because in this uh, hydraulic machinery part uh, the question can be frequently asked from the hydraulic turbines as well as the side of uh, centrifugal pumps as well as the reciprocating pumps okay so if you see in the interview point of view also the centrifugal pump or i can say the reciprocating part or i can say the hydraulic turbines are very uh, important important topic the and the questions From this, from this topic, can be frequently asked in these exams. Okay, so you have to be very, pay very careful attention while attempting this particular subject. That's a very interesting subject also. Okay, and if you have covered, if you have the basic knowledge of the hydraulic part, then you can easily able to understand each and every questions, and you can easily solve all the question at perfectly. Okay, so let us start solving our first question. So see here, so see here, our first question is a Pelton wheel is, is ideally suited for. Okay, so first of all, just see. in the hydro in the hydraulic machine but we but we do we study those type of machine which generally basically deals with the hydraulics which generally deals with the mechanical energy as well as the water power because basically the hydraulic machines are those machine which either converts the hydraulic energy into the corresponding mechanical energy or the mechanical energy into the corresponding hydraulic energy okay so here we have turbines and here we have different different types of pumps so basically if i say about the turbine turbines are those hydraulic machine which either converts the water power stored in the water into the corresponding mechanical work okay which will be further converted into the electrical energy by means of generator okay so just see in this question basically it is asking you regarding the pelton wheel so basically when you classify the different different types of turbine then we have the turbines such as the impulse turbine and the reaction turbine okay so if you see impulse and reaction turbine so these are basically the two uh, types of turbine which we normally study in the case of the hydraulic turbines as well as in the case of the steam turbine and if i talk about the impulse turbine basically which has only ka in the uh, kinetic energy at the inlet is basically classified into the pelton turbine okay so pelton turbine is basically a turbine which is a tangential flow impulse turbine okay and which is possessing the kinetic energy only at the inlet okay and see here so when you classify the turbine there are many many ways of classifying it we can classify the turbine based on the type of the energy at the inlet we can classify the uh, type of turbine at the base on the head available okay on the turbine so see here so basically the pelton wheel when we define the pelton wheel it is ideally suited basically for the high head turbines so when we categorize it com comes under the category of the high head turbines okay that you have to remember whereas in case of the reaction turbine if you see the reaction turbines comes under the category of the medium and the low head turbines in which we have the francis kaplan as well as the propeller turbine okay so whenever you uh, deals with the reaction, uh, reaction turbine then we have the operating head as medium or low head okay so in the in, in the reaction turbine also when you study about the francis turbine it is basically a turbine which comes under the medium head turbines and when you study about the kaplan and the propeller turbine it comes into the comes under the low head turbines okay that you have to understand okay so see here uh, according to this case i can say a pelton wheel is a turbine which is ideally suited for the high head and the low discharge turbine that's a very simple question and in the also in the oil india exam the question can be very simple okay uh, there will be not a lot of in numerical part also the question can be directly asked from the theoretical part only okay so see here our next question so next question is kaplan turbine so basically just right now i have told you that a kaplan turbine is basically a turbine which is a, uh, which which comes under the category of the reaction turbine which has both 
pressure energy as well as the kinetic energy at the inlet okay so that means it is basically a low head turbines actually and in this case the turbine uh, the flow of water is taking place axially okay so when you classify the turbine based on the type of flow so let us say we have a turbine here so when the water strike the, this turbine in that case the water strike tangentially okay so basically the pelton wheel is a tangential flow turbine okay and when i uh, say about the kaplan kaplan is basically a axial flow turbine kaplan is a axial flow turbine why so because if you saw the schematic diagram of the kaplan flow turbine in this case the turbine is something like that okay and here we have a blade and the flow of water take place in the in the direction parallel to the axis of the rotation okay so here if you see the hub is rotating basically about this dotted line that is longitudinal axis and here in this case the flow of water is taking place parallel to this axis of the rotation so that means it is a axial flow reaction turbine okay so basically it is operating under a low head so that i can say it is a low head axial flow turbine that's a very simple question in this case okay so now let's move to our next part so our question number third is in order to have a maximum power from a pelton turbine this bucket the bucket speed must be okay so just see uh when you study the hydraulic turbine there are a lot of uh, lot of calculations regarding the work done and lot of calculations regarding the efficiencies okay so when i calculate the pelton work done in the case of pelton turbine the work done formula comes out to be something like that rho q that is mass flow rate into rate of change of momentum that is vw1 minus vw2 into if i want to calculate the work done then we have to multiply it by the bucket speed also okay so that's the basic formula which you have studied in the case of the pelton turbine to calculate the work done okay so now just say here i can say the work done is basically depending upon the bucket speed okay so when i calculate the condition that when can be the work done will be maximum so in that case there is a proper derivation here so here i can say when the bucket speed basically when the bucket speed of the pelton wheel is basically equal to the half of the jet speed in that case basically i can say the work done which you are getting from a pelton turbine is a maximum condition actually in the case of pelton turbine how it is operating basically so here if you see we have a dam here here we have a dam in which some water is stored and some water and that water flow through the penstoke and it enters into the nozzle here okay so when it enters into the nozzle all the water which is having a kind of, uh, basically a pressure energy or i can say the water energy is converted into the kinetic energy okay so when the fluid flows from this particular nozzle it is having a very high value of the kinetic energy okay and when i say that when it strikes the pelton wheel here actually it transfers some momentum into the wheel okay uh, so when i can say when i say that the bucket speed basically the speed of this bucket Uh, of this wheel is equal to the half of the speed of this jet in that case the corresponding amount of work which you are getting will be maximum okay so here in this case when the bucket speed is equal to half of the jet speed in that case you will you will have a maximum power or i can say the maximum work done in the case of the pelton turbine okay that's a very simple question okay rima don't worry uh, carbocation केमिस्ट्री और आपके पास इसी दोनों के लिए सबके हमें बैच स्टार्ट होने वाले डोंट वरी यार ठीक है अभी ये सिर्फ मैकेनिकल के लिए स्टार्ट हुआ है आपके पास यहाँ भी बाकी ब्रांचेस के लिए भी होंगे डोंट वरी ओके सो नाउ लेट्स मूव टू अवर नेक्स्ट पार्ट द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर ए हाइड्रोलिक टर्बाइन डिवेलप दी थाउजेंड किलो वॉट ऑफ पावर फॉर अ हेड ऑफ फोर्टी मीटर सो इट्स अवर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर सो हेयर यू कैन सी इन दिस केस वट इज गिवन टू अस वी हैव बिन प्रोवाइडेड विद हाइड्रोलिक टर्बाइन विच इज डिवेलपिंग अ पावर ऑफ थाउजेंड किलो वॉट so here the power is producing of 100 kilowatt and it is producing at a head of 40 meter okay so if you want to calculate the corresponding power developed when i reduce the head so here it is asking you to calculate the value of the power when the corresponding head is basically 20 meter okay so here you have to calculate the corresponding calculation so you have to perform the uh, corresponding calculation so see here basically uh, when the parameters of the particular turbine is changing in that case you have to use the proper unit quantities so uh, in the case of the hydraulic turbines we have different different types of the uh, i can say unit quantities like we have unit power unit discharge and unit head unit speed okay and 
whenever I define these unit quantities, I am basically predicting the behavior of a single turbine when it is operating under a different operating conditions. Okay, so here you can say, uh, in this case, you want to calculate the power. That means you have to use the unit quantity of unit power here. So basically, the unit power is nothing, but it is defined as the as the ratio of the power divided by head to the power three by two. Okay, so here you will see that P2 by P1 is going to be equal to H2 by H1 to the power 3 by 2. I have just compared the power with respect to head here. Okay. So here, if you just put all the value into this expression, you will get your answer. So that's a very simple question here you can see. So here the value of the H2 is basically given to you as 20. And here the value of H1 is given to you 40. Okay. This to the power 3 by 2. To here okay so that's a very simple question so if you uh, calculate this you will get the answer as so here you can see so see you have to perform this calculation without calculator so you should understand that how can we how can i calculate this particular value so just see it will come out to be around thousand divided by two to the power three by two okay so here also i can say the power corresponding to head 20 meter will be equal to thousand divided by 4 root 2 okay and if you solve this you will get your particular answer so answer in this case will come out to be around oh sorry it is equal to 2 root 2 so here if you solve this you will get your answer nearly about 353 something okay so therefore i can say the pelton turbine or i can say the hydraulic turbine is producing a power of around 354 nearly 354 kilowatt when the operating head is changing is changed from 40 to 20 meter okay so the option number will be b will be the correct answer in this case that's the correct answer here okay so now just see our question number fifth so basically in this question what is given to us we have been asked the specific speed of a turbine okay so what is the meaning of actually specific speed so specific speed is a uh, is a parameter which is generally defined in order to uh, differentiate or i can say in order to compare the different different types of turbine okay this parameter can also be used to class and compare the different different types of compost also okay so see here basically whenever you define uh, when you are whenever you are defining the specific speed of a particular turbine in that case we say that it is the speed of So here in this case, we say that it is a speed of a imaginary time turbines, which is basically identical with uh, identical in every manner. That is the same blade angles are same. Okay. The dimensions are basically uh, in dimension can be anything. Okay. So basically the blade angle is same opening is same or shape is same. Okay. So now the only thing is that this particular imaginary turbine is operating. It is operating under a unit head and it is operating a corresponding unit power. Okay. So here the option number C will be the correct answer that it, it is going to be developed unit power under the unit head. So, but, but see here, when are you, whenever you are defining the specific speed of a pump, in that case, you have to make sure that the turbine is operating uh, corresponding to one meter head and it is producing a discharge of one meter cube per second. Okay. So that's the differentiation between the specific speed of a turbine with the pump here. So here the option number C will be the correct answer of this case. That is option number C of answer number of question number five. Okay. So next question is the purpose of surge tank in pipeline is to, okay. So just see in this case, the question number six, basically the surge tank is a tank, which is used uh, to relieve the pressure. Actually what happens uh, whenever the water is flowing through a pen stroke, it is flowing at a very high speed. Okay. In that case, when I suddenly close the valve in that case, what will happen? A water hemming terminal will take place and the corresponding pressure we will generate. So in order to relieve the pressure due to the water hammer, what we do, we provide an arrangement known as surge tank in the pipeline, okay, which is very close to the exit of the pen stroke. So here the option number D will be the correct answer. Okay, so now let's move to our next part. A cavitation in a hydraulic reaction turbine is mostly likely to occur at the, okay, so just see, cavitation is a phenomena, basically. Cavitation is basically a phenomena which is taking place uh, in the case of hydraulic machine that is in the case of turbine also and in the case of the pump also and why it is happening so actually first of, first of all just understand why it is happening uh, okay so see here when the fluid flows from any hydraulic machine okay whether it is flowing through a pump or i can say turbines in that case the, the pressure of the fluid is correspondingly continuously changing okay somewhere it is very high and somewhere it is very low okay and so now 
what happens when the pressure of absolute pressure of the liquid become very less or become the equal to the vapor pressure in that case the boiling phenomena will take place okay and once the boiling phenomena take place in that case we say that the formation of bubble will take place okay and due to the uh, motion of the fluid the bubbles will correspond uh, will also flow with the liquid okay and when the bubble reaches a particular location where the pressure of the let us say liquid become very high as compared to the vapor pressure in vapor pressure in that case the uh, bursting of the bubble will take place okay and due to the bursting the voids will form in the hydraulic machine and due to fill that particular voids all the liquid from the surrounding will rush into it that particular this entire phenomena is known as the cavitation actually okay and here if you see in the case of the reaction turbine actually what is happening in the case of reaction turbine in the reaction turbine we have a runner blade here okay over which we have a guide blade so here we have a guide blade okay and over this we have a casing so now what is happening so whenever the fluid is flowing whenever the fluid is flowing through the pen stroke into the casing the pressure energy correspondingly decreases continuously why because the fluid is flowing through a con converging section so here in this case if you see when the temp when the liquid reaches at particular this particular position this this is the this is the rotor exit here okay so when the water uh, reaches at this particular point at this point the pressure of the liquid becomes very less okay and that point we can say the cavitation phenomena can take place there will be a chances of having the cavitation phenomena at this particular stage okay so here i can say at the rotor exit we will have a problem of cavitation in the case of hydraulic reaction turbine mukul your answer is correct okay so next question is if d and d are the diameter of the runner and the jet of the pattern will respectively the number of bucket on the runner is given by okay so see here uh, there is a one formula which is known as tegun formula okay so basically by means of by with by the help of the tegun formula we can calculate the value of the number of jets no sorry number of buckets here so according to the tegun formula the number of buckets on the wheel can be written as 15 plus the ratio of capital d upon small d so that's the relation basically the tegun formula actually here and here the ratio of this particular capital d upon small d is nothing but it is known as the jet ratio here okay so you have to also understand that jet ratio is nothing but it is the but it is the ratio of the just wait a minute okay so you here you can see the jet ratio is nothing but it is a ratio of the dia of the runner jet ratio it is basically the dia dia of the runner to the dia of the jet here okay so out of these four option i can say the option number d will be the correct answer okay so that's the correct answer in this case now let's move to our next part okay so uh, question number 9 here is our question number 9 so here you can see the water hammer is basically developed in okay so what i have told you right now that the water hammer phenomena will generally take place in the case of the pen stroke only okay so and why it is happening whenever we close the valve okay so here by operating the valve let us say by closing the valve suddenly in that case a water phenomena uh, phenomena or i can say the pressure wave form in the pen stroke okay and it can also damage the pen stroke also and in order to avoid the water hammer what we do we generally provide a surge tank here so surge tank is basically an arrangement which is generally uh, which is normally provided in order to uh, decrease this particular phenomena that is water hammer in the pen stroke okay so now let's move to our next question question number 10 the draft tube in a turbine serves the following purpose okay so I see here basically draft tube is a very important uh, arrangement which is provided in the case of the reaction turbine actually if you see we can uh, if you see in the case of the impulse turbine the fluid has only the kinetic energy and the whenever the fluid is flowing across the runner okay the pressure energy is not converting okay the pressure energy is entirely constant it is equal to the atmospheric pressure so we don't require any kind of draft tube in the case of impulse turbine whereas in case of uh, whereas in case of the reaction turbine basically we normally require the draft tube here okay why so because the pressure is continuously decreasing and i have already mentioned you that in the case of the reaction turbine also the pressure at the exit of the rotor will become very less and sometimes the cavitation phenomena can take place okay so here you can see basically the draft tube so now see just see what is the meaning of draft tube actually draft tube is nothing but it is a passage of a diverging section okay so whenever the fluid is flowing through a draft tube basically the kinetic energy 
at the exit of the ex at the exit of the turbine is converting into the pressure energy okay so here you can see the pressure energy at point number 1 will be less and the pressure energy at point number 2 will going to be higher okay and and similarly the kinetic energy at point number 1 is going to be high the kinetic energy at the exit of the rotor is going to be very high and it is continuously converting into the pressure energy here so i can say at the point number 2 the corresponding kinetic energy is going to be very less okay so what is it, what it is doing actually so here in this case basically the draft tube uh, it is increasing the working head actually okay so just see yeah that's the first main purpose of using okay so in this question so basically in this option you can see it is not entirely mentioned here just wait a minute okay so basically in this case it is not mentioned actually it, it also serve a one more purpose that it increases the net effective head in the case of the turbines and how it is increasing suppose let us suppose if you have a dam here let us say if you have a dam here okay and i have installed a turbine let us suppose here over the water okay now just assume let us say if i say that to you that the difference the dis difference between these two that is dam and the turbine is let us say equal to 100 meter so here i can say the net head under which the turbine is operating it is basically equal to the 100 meter now with the help of the draft tube what i can do i can install the turbine at us let us say some particular height okay and with the help of draft tube also i can maintain the negative pressure head at the turbine let us say i am maintaining a pressure head of minus 5 meter okay so now you can see the distance between the dam and the corresponding turbine is equal to 95 meter so now by using the draft tube, I have maintained the negative pressure head at the turbines. So therefore, the net effective head will become in this case 95 minus minus 5. Okay. So that means even though the distance between the turbine and the dam is equal to 95 meter, but the correspondingly the net effective head of the turbine has been increased by means of the draft tube only. Okay. So here I, the option number D will be the correct answer that is it increases the working head thereby increasing the efficiency of the turbine. Okay. So now let's move to our next part. Yeah, Vijay, your answer is correct actually. Okay. So now just see uh, the next question in a reaction turbine, the function of draft tube. So just right now what I have told you, it is basically uh, used to increase the, uh, it, it, it is basically used to convert the kinetic energy at the exit of the turbine into the corresponding pressure energy. Okay. So here, if you see, it provides the safety to the turbine that is not correct it is provide it is basically preventing the air from the entry that is also not correct okay it is rear convert the kinetic energy into the corresponding flow energy that is also that is basically a correct answer of this question so option number c will be the correct answer in this case okay so now so the next question is the unit speed of the turbine runner is basically okay so now just see unit speed is basically what i have told you that unit quantities are those quantities which are defined in the case of hydraulic machine in order to compare the turbines when they are operating under the different varying conditions okay so if you see in the case of the unit quantities we have different different unit quantities like we have unit speed here we have unit power and unit discharge okay so these are some of the unit quantities which we normally study in the case of the turbine so if you i want to define the unit speed of the turbine unit speed is nothing but it is the ratio of the speed to the under root of h here okay so basically the option number b will be the correct answer in this case okay so i hope it's very clear to all of you now let's move to our next question the main characteristic curves of a turbine's mean okay so, so just see okay so that's a very important concept here so basically uh in order to study the behavior, exact behavior and the performance of a hydraulic turbine, we draw different, different types of characteristic curves. Like we have a main characteristic curves, like we have an operating characteristic curves. Okay, there are lots of curves actually here. And for the same, same for the case of the pump also. Okay, so basically the main characteristic curve is one of those particular curves and it is basically drawn at a particular constant speed here. So option number C will be the correct answer of this case. Okay, so now let's move to our next question. In general, the maximum number of jet employed in impulse turbine without jet interference is basically equal to. Okay, so just see. Uh, in the case of the impulse turbine, actually, 
okay we required a number of jet okay in order to let us say if i want to increase the power output from the hydraulic turbine then we have to inc have to use the multiple number of nozzles okay and the maximum number of uh, nozzles which you can use in the case of impulse turbine it can be equal to 6 here so option number c will be the correct answer in this case okay so now let's move to our next question which of the following turbine is most efficient at power load operation okay so that's a very simple question actually in the case of the basically uh, the kaplan turbine so because the kaplan turbine is a low head axial flow reaction turbine it can be used for the high uh, high uh, high load as well as the part load also okay and basically at the part load also part load operation it is operating at a very perfect uh, operates very perfectly okay so here we normally prefer the kaplan turbines for the part load operation because it is more most efficient one of the most efficient as compared to the other turbines okay so next question is the hydraulic efficiency of a reaction turbine is the ratio of actually so just see basically in the case of the just wait a minute yeah so just see basically in the case of our reaction turbine uh, we have different different types of efficiencies like we have manometric uh, sorry hydraulic efficiency like we have uh, mechanical efficiency overall efficiency and volumetric efficiency okay so actually what is happening here so basically in the case of a hydraulic any hydraulic power plant what we have initially we have a water power here initially we have a water power here and it is basically converting into the runner power here and further when it is rotating the shaft of the system then it is producing the shaft power here okay so when we are comparing the runner power with the initial water power water power in that case we normally define the hydraulic efficiency and hydraulic power hydraulic efficiency is nothing but it is the ratio of the runner power to the water power here okay so here in this case in the case of hydraulic reaction turbine basically it is the ratio of the work done on the wheel to the energy to the actually supplied to the turbine yeah so here the option number c yeah option number c will be the correct answer in this case okay so basically the power produced by the turbine to the actual energy actually supplied by the turbine it is wrong actually work available at the turbine to the energy imparted to the wheel work done on the wheel to the energy or head of water actually supplied to the turbine yeah option number c will be the correct answer in this case okay that you have to correct that that you have to remember okay so now let's move to our next question which turbine gives the constant efficiency with high load condition actually okay so just see in order to have a high load efficient condition under the constant efficiency you have to study some important characteristic curves okay so basically from the characteristic curve i can say uh, i can easily answer this particular question that under the uh, for the case of the kaplan turbine basically it is producing a constant efficiency with a high load condition here okay so basically the kaplan turbine is having a adjustable blade which is producing a maximum efficiency also okay, okay. and it is also operating best at under the power load condition also okay so option number d will be the correct answer in this case okay so now next question is what does the specific speed of a hydraulic tur uh, hydraulic turbines depend upon okay so just see basically the specific speed specific speed of a hydraulic turbine is given by this particular expression that is it is equal to n root p divided by h to the power 5 by 4 here so here you can see the specific speed of a hydraulic turbine is basically depending upon the shaft power developed by the turbine okay and the corresponding head of the water okay so here out of these particular options i can say it is depending upon the speed power and the head of the power option number d will be the correct answer in this case okay so option number d will be the correct answer for this question and you have to remember that whenever you are uh, let us say any type of numerical will uh, is asked from this particular case so you have to take the n in the rpm here and you have to take the unit of the power as kilowatt here and the corresponding unit of the head will be in the meter okay so these are the particular unit of this term okay and it is not a dimensionless formula okay okay and if you want to write the dimensional formula of this specific speed it can also be written as this one so that is this is the basically the dimensionless formula okay and here just remember one thing never you you don't have to use that particular formula okay for the calculation purpose if some numerical is asked then always you have to use this particular formula okay this is a dimensionless form of representing the speed in speed okay so now let's move to the next part euler equation of water turbine is derived on the basis of okay so just see 
Euler equation is a very important equation in the case of the uh, water turbines. Okay, for any hydraulic machine, whether it is a centrifugal pump, pumps, or whether I am talking about the turbines, Euler equation is a fundamental equation basically, and it is basically states that the we can calculate the work done or we can calculate the force exerted by means of calculating the rate of change of the angular momentum. Okay, because when the water enters into the turbine, it enters at the different radial location. So here you will see it is entering at a radial distance of point number one, and it is exiting at a point number two, which is at a different radial distance. Okay. So here, due to the rate of change of angular momentum, I can say the corresponding force exert force exerted or the torque exerted will be take will be there in the case of these turbines. So option number C will be the correct answer of this case. Okay. So next question is high head hydropower plant. Okay, so just see in this question what is asked. It has been asked to you high head. Just wait a minute, which one? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, so basically the next question is the high head basically hydro uh, hydro power plant uses the. Okay, so just see uh, when you classify the turbines, we have a classification on based on the head as high head, low head and medium head turbines. Okay, and high head turbines are basically the impulse turbines, which are producing a very low discharge actually and they are required, they require a very high, uh, high head. Okay, whereas in case of Kaplan turbine, if you see, uh, these are very low head turbines and they are producing a maximum discharge actually. Okay, so whenever when it is mentioning that it is a high head hydropower plant, that means it is using the Pelton turbine in this case. Okay, so it is basically producing the Pelton turbine in this case. The option number C will be the correct answer of this case. Okay, so next question is the head loss due to friction for the flow of water through the pen stop can be minimized by. Okay, okay, so just see here, uh, here we have a dam. Okay, and from the dam, the water flows towards the turbine by means of a pen stock here. So pen stock is basically a pipe of uniform diameter. Okay, so if you want to calculate the value of the head loss due to friction, okay, head loss due to friction, it is nothing but it is given by 4 FLV square divided by 2 GD. Okay, so in the basically fluid in, in basic fluid mechanics, we know that the major losses we can easily calculate by means of this formula. Okay, the Darcy equation basically. Okay, so from here you can see if I increase the let us say uh, in the option we are given that okay, so just see if I increase the velocity of the flow, if I increase the velocity, in that case, the head loss of the friction is going to be decreased, uh, is going to be increased, but we have to minimize. Okay, so now the next question is next option number C is increasing the length of pen stroke so here you can see if you increase the length of the pen stroke in that case also the head loss due to friction is going to be increased okay similarly if i increase the dia of the stroke so if i increase the dia of the pen stroke in that case the head loss due to friction is going to be decreased okay so that means i can say option number b will be the correct answer of this question okay so by if i increase the diameter of the pen stroke in that case the corresponding uh, head loss going, is going to be minimized. Okay, so next question is the efficiency of the turbine of an impulse turbine. Sorry, the efficiency of turbine. Oh, sorry, the efficiency of an impulse turbine. Okay. Okay, so here you can see can we obtain, is it possible to attain the 100% efficiency in the case of impulse turbine? Yes or no? Okay, so just see. In the case of the impulse turbine, basically, how can you calculate the uh, hydraulic efficiency or blade efficiency? Basically, the formula hydraulic efficiency is nothing but it is defining the ratio of the runner power to the water power here. Okay, so if you want, if you do the entire calculation, the final formula of the hydraulic efficiency in the simplified form, we get as something like that 1 by k cos of phi divided by 2 here. Okay, that's the formula of the hydraulic efficiency after a lot of simplification. So now just see here the K is representing the basically the friction, friction present between inside uh, between the blades. Okay, so if there is no friction, if the blades are frictionless, in that case we say that the value of the K, which is nothing but it is the ratio of the relative velocity VR2 divided by VR1 is going to be equal to 1. Okay, and if the angle of deflection is basically equal to 180 degree. So if the angle of deflection is basically equal to 180 degree for the hemispherical bucket. Okay, so just see. 
the shape of bucket in the case of the pattern by is in this form okay so if this shape is entirely hemispherical in that case we say that the value of this phi the angle of deflection is basically equal to the 180 degree okay so if you calculate this particular if you calculate the value of the hydraulic efficiency oh just wait a minute it is equal to oh just wait a second sir so here when the angle of deflection is basically equal to 180 degree okay so here the phi is nothing but it is representing the 180 degree minus angle of deflection so if the angle of deflection is 180 degree in that case i can say the phi angle is going to be equal to zero okay so therefore the hydraulic efficiency in this case can become equal to 100% okay but even though the hydraulic efficiency is coming out to be 100% but it is not producing any work so here in this case the efficiency may approach 100% for the hemispherical frictionless bucket vanes frictionless bucket vane that you have to remember because in the case of frictionless only i can say the value of k is going to be equal to 1 so if it is not frictionless in that case Uh, this value will come out to always come out to be less than one here. So here the option number A will be the correct answer. Option number D is also given here, but it is not correct because here it is not mentioned that the blade buckets are of hemispherical shape. That's that hemispherical word is very important in this case. Okay, that you have to remember. Okay, so next question is basically the Tygon formula for the number of bucket in the case of the Pelton turbine hold good for the value of the jet ratio varying from Okay, so just see, uh, Tygon formula. I have already explained you. Tygon formula is nothing but it is given by the number of bucket is equal to fifteen plus m by two. Here m is nothing but it is the jet ratio here, which is defined as the ratio of the wheel diameter to the bucket. Uh, sorry, jet dia. Sorry. Okay, so here in that case. in the case of the pelton turbine okay so tygon formula is basically valid when the number of buckets basically varies from 6 to 35 okay so if the value is coming out to be less less than 6 or greater than 35 then its formula is, is not valid here okay so this formula is only valid when this bucket is coming uh, is coming in the range of 6 to 35 only that you have to remember okay so the next question is two hydraulic turbines having the identical specific speed and the effective head at the inlet If the speed ratio of the turbine is two, okay. So here, just see the two hydraulic turbines having the identical specific speed. So that means I can say the specific speed of first turbine is equal to the specific speed of second turbine. And here it is given that n one is basically divided by n two is equal to two here. Now we have to calculate the respective power ratio p one by p two here. Okay, so just see. The specific speed is nothing but it is given by n1 root p1 divided by h1 to the power 5 by 4. Okay, and similarly for the second turbine, I can say n2 root p2 divided by h2 to the power 5 by 4. Okay, so here I can say if the two hydraulic turbines have identical specific speed and effective head at the inlet, then the denominator will be cancelled out. Okay, and here the corresponding p1 by p2 will come out to be equal to N two by N one to the power two. Okay, so if you solve this, you will get your answer as here. You can see P one and P two will come out to be around one by two whole of square. That is one by four. That means the option number B will be the correct answer in this case. Okay, so that is the answer of this particular question. Okay, now let's move to our next question. For a Pelton wheel turbine having a jet ratio at 10, the number of bucket to be used are. That's a very simple question. We have to use the uh, simply the Tygon formula, and the number of bucket will be equal to 15 plus 10 by 2 here. The answer will come out to be around 20. The so option number C will be the correct answer in this case. Okay. Let's move to our next question. A double a double overhang Pelton wheel. So basically, just see. In the case of a overhang turbine or over overhang Pelton wheel. basically the turbines uh, is having a two 
two runners which are in between the series here so here the option number will be b that is correct here that is if the turbines is having the two runner then in that case pelton turbine is basically known as the overhung pelton wheel okay so option number b will be the correct answer of this question okay so next question is in a kaplan turbine runner the number of blade is generally between that's a very simple question in the case of the kaplan turbine you generally have the adjustable blade adjustable blade and the number of these blades ranges from 4 to 8 here so option number b will be the correct answer in this case okay the next question is cavitation in hydraulic turbine results in noise and vibration reduce of discharge drop in output and efficiency rough surfaces okay so if you if you see uh, it is basically producing the vibration in the system but it is not producing the noise here it is it is reducing the discharge it is dropping output and efficiency so if you see out of these four option actually the option number c that is decrease in the output and the efficiency is the more appropriate answer okay so even though option number b and d are also correct but it is not appropriate as per the option number c okay so if i have to compare between these three three then the option number c will be the best answer so it is producing the drop in output and the corresponding decrease in efficiency okay so next question is an impulse turbine produces the 50 kilowatt of power when the blade mean speed is okay so here the runner power from the pelton turbine is given to you as 50 kilowatt and the corresponding blade mean speed blade mean speed is equal to 400 meter per second so we have to calculate the what is the rate of change of momentum tangential to the rotor okay so what can be the answer here actually uh, in the case of the imp any hydraulic turbines basically okay the rate of change of momentum is representing the force exerted okay and if you see the runner power is nothing but it is equal to the force exerted into the corresponding blade velocity so here the f is representing the rate of the change of the momentum tangential to the rotor so here you have to calculate this particular value of the f here only so here the runner power will come out to be around 50 kilowatt divided by trade velocity that is 400 and if you solve this you will get your answer so here you can see the answer will come out to be around 125 newton i think it will be coming out coming out nearly about 125 so option number d will be the correct answer of this in this case okay so that you have to remember okay so the next question is Consider the following energies connected with the Pelton turbine. The mechanical energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. The correct sequence of the energy conversion from the entry to the fluid. From the entry of the fluid is. So see here. Initially, in the case of the Pelton turbine, we generally store the water at a particular height by means of dam here. Okay, so initially, we have a potential energy. And when it enters into the corresponding nozzle, then this entire... Uh, potential energy or a water energy is basically converting into the kinetic energy and after that when the fluid with very high kinetic energy uh, strikes the let us say blade then it is producing the corresponding mechanical energy okay so first of all here it is potential energy then we have a kinetic energy then we have a mechanical energy okay so here if i want to mark the correct sequence so option number c that is three two one will be the correct answer of this case okay that you have to remember okay the next question is the term dash is used to specify what portion of the total energy transfer across a rotor is related to the change of static pressure enthalpy across the rotor okay so just see uh, there is a very important term in the case of the reaction turbine that is degree of reaction actually okay and what does degree of reaction tell you about actually what happens whenever the fluid is flowing through a rotor okay in that case it is producing some work outputs but you don't know whether this work is producing entirely due to the pressure energy or entirely due to the kinetic energy okay because in the case of the reaction turbine we both have pressure energy as well as kinetic energy at the inlet and the entire runner power which is producing from a particular turbine is actually having some portion of potential as well as having some uh, sorry having some portion of kinetic as well as having some portion of pressure energy okay so basically degree of reaction is a particular term okay parameter which tells you about that how much portion of the pressure energy will is there in the case of the total runner, runner, runner power 
okay so how much contribution of pressure energy is basically there in the case of the total turnover power it is that particular thing is represented by the degree of reaction okay so here the option number basically the d will be the correct answer so here you can see suppose if i tell you that the degree of reaction is equal to 40% let us say or it is equal to 0.4 that means out of total runner power the 40% contribution will be of the uh, pressure energy and the remaining 60% contribution is of the pelt uh, is of the kinetic energy okay so here you can see in the case of the pelt and turbine we don't have any contribution of pressure energy because the pressure energy is entirely constant okay so therefore in the case of pelt and turbine i can say the degree of reaction is coming out to be equal to zero only okay so here the option number d will be the correct answer okay so now let's question is the degree of reaction of impulse turbine it is basically equal to zero here okay so next question is runaway speed of the turbine so okay so just see uh, actually what happens right now i have uh, in the previous question i have told you that the maximum efficiency of a pelt and turbine is obtained when it is operating at a speed the when the bucket speed is equal to the half of the jet speed okay so basically there is a one parameter which is known as the runaway speed or racing speed it is also known as a, known as a racing speed here so it is basically a speed of a turbine when the turbine is operating at the speed equal to the jet speed okay so when i say that the value of u is equal to v in that case the speed of the turbine is known as the runaway speed okay so here you can see okay so now here we have to mark the uh, correct option for the runaway speed so basically the runaway speed of the turbine is the speed which is corresponding to the maximum overload permissible that is not correct at which the turbine runner can be allowed to run freely without load and we could get wide open at which there will be no damage to the turbine runner so here the option number b will be the correct answer okay so whenever the turbine is runner is basically running freely without any load okay then at that point we say that it is a runaway speed here or i can say the racing speed okay the next question is in a centrifugal pump the cavitation is basically reduced by okay so just see in the case of the uh, centrifugal pump the cavitation can be take place at the inlet of the pump because the pressure at the inlet is very very less and as the fluid flows across the different different components of the central pump the corresponding pressure is increasing okay so here so when you uh, when you reduce the suction head okay when you re reduce the suction head basically due to which what happens the pressure at the inlet does not become very less so here the option number c will be correct and here the chances of the cavitation will also get reduced okay so next question is the delivery valve while studying the centrifugal pump so here you can see whenever you are studying the basically the centrifugal pump in that case you have to make sure that the delivery valve is fully closed okay so if it is not fully closed then the flow the flow of liquid will take place without any increase in pressure okay next question is a surge tank is provided in a hydro power hydro power scheme so what the main purpose of uh, surge tank is to reduce the water hammer pressure the option number b will be the correct answer in this case okay the next question is a uh, impeller with a backward curved vents okay so just see in the case of a centrifugal pump we can use any type of blade we have a backward curved blades we have a radial curved vents we have a forward curved blades okay so here whenever we are using the backward curved vents basically in that case the pressure rise is basically is is not so much high it is less but the corresponding power consumption is reduced okay so here i can say basically in the case of a backward curved vanes we have a falling head characteristics whereas in the case of a forward curved vane we have a rising head characteristics whereas in case of a uh, radial curved vanes we have a constant head characteristics okay that you have to remember okay so next question is in a centrifugal pump the inlet angle is designed okay okay just so just see if you have a basic idea of how the velocity angle of the centrifugal pump is drawn then you have to make then you have to then you have uh, also observe then the centrifugal pump are designed in such a way that the flow to the inlet to the centrifugal pump is radial in the direction is in the radial direction basically okay so here the flow velocity at the inlet is basically zero okay or i can say the absolute velocity is in the radial direction so if the absolute velocity is in the radial direction that means that the wall component of the velocity is going to be equal to zero here okay okay so next question is which of the following type of impeller is used in the centrifugal pump to deal with the uh, mud here okay so just see 
they are different different types of arrangement of the impellers we normally use in the case of centrifugal pump we have a double suction pump we have a shrouded impellers they are different different case okay uh, the impeller can be an open type okay the, or i can say the impeller can be a cover type so if it is covered then it is known as a shrouded impeller okay so here in this case when we are dealing with the mud we are actually dealing with the one sided uh, one sided shrouded here okay so option b will be the correct answer in this case okay so next question is the limiting value of the separation pressure head for the water okay so basically it is asking you regarding the absolute uh, pressure value when the cavitation can take place okay so in the case of if you see the limiting value of the separation pressure will take only will only take place when the water pressure is will become equal to the vapor pressure okay and here the this particular limit value is defined is defined as a 2.5 meter of water so here the option number d will be the correct answer the next question is the reciprocating pump cannot run at a very high speed why we cannot uh, run the reciprocating pump at a very high speed because there is a pulsation i can say the fluctuation of discharge okay or i can say there is a chances of cavitation okay chances of cavitation also take place the possibility of cavitation also increases in the case of reciprocating pump okay and it also increases the escalation head that is also perfectly correct so all of these statements are the correct answer of this question okay so option number d will be the correct answer now let's move to our next question in the negative slip of a reciprocating pump the actual discharge as compared to the theoretical discharge is okay so just see slip is nothing but it is defined as the difference of actual discharge sorry theoretical discharge minus actual discharge okay so when the actual discharge become very high as compared to the theoretical discharge in that case we say that we are obtaining this slip as a negative slip okay so here when the actual discharge as compared to the theoretical discharge is more in that case the slip is going to be negative okay so the actual discharge will be more as compared to theoretical discharge in the case of reciprocating pump to have a negative slip here okay so then now just see the next question is which one of the following can generate the highest pressure okay so these are different different types of the uh, pumps here actually okay so just see whenever we classify the pumps we have a positive displacement as well as the we have the uh, rotodynamic pumps okay so basically in the case of positive displacement what we are doing we are basically compressing the liquid up to a small volume okay which are basically increasing the pressure of the system okay so out of this option basically the screw pump is basically a those pump which will produce a generate which will generate the highest pressure okay so the option number c will be the correct answer in this case okay so next question is if the net positive suction head requirement for the pump is not satisfied okay so just see first of all just before answering this question you have to understand what is the meaning of net positive suction head basically net positive suction head is the condition i can say it is the value of the net available head which is present at the inlet of the at the inlet of the pump to make sure that the cavitation doesn't happen in the system okay so here basically the ntsh is defined as the difference of the absolute pressure at the inlet minus vapor pressure plus we have a suction velocity head okay so this uh, this entire form is known as the npsh basically so whenever a pump is manufactured by in the industry then the manufacturer will provide you a particular with a minimum value of npsh here okay so here the required npsh is basically provided to you by the manufacturer it is provided to you by the manufacturer here okay and actually what you are doing you are basically installing a pump at a particular random location okay so the location where you are installing the pump will be having some amount of will be some value of the vapor pressure then it, it is also having some value of these uh, suction velocity head and correspondingly the inlet pressure will be something okay so here you will see the npsh at any particular location where you are installing the pump it is basically given given as available npsh okay now if you want to make sure that the pump is operating uh without cavitation then you have to make sure that this value this value of the available npsh become always get more as compared to this required npsh okay so if i say 
if the value of the available NPSH is more, when the value of this available NPSH is more as compared to the required NPSH, in that case, always the cavitation, uh, cavitation free operation will be there. Okay. So here, if the net positive suction head requirement of the pump is not satisfied, in that case, the cavitation is going to be formed. Okay. So here, the option B will be the correct answer. Okay. So next question is the centrifugal pump preferred to a specific speed between the 80 to 160 RPM. Okay. So just see, in the case of a centrifugal pump, basically, how we define the specific speed? Specific speed is defined as this formula n root q divided by h 3 by 4 okay so again uh, just you have to make sure that whenever some questions that let us say some numerical is asked from this particular question then you have to make sure that this n is always you have to use in rpm q is should be in meter cube per second and this head should be in meter okay so this formula is also not a dimensionless formula okay so here if you want to write this formula in the dimensionless form then you have to make sure that you have to you have to you use this particular form okay so there are two ways of uh, uh, representing the specific speed here so this formula is a very important formula and this is not frequently used while calculating the specific speed just wait a minute okay so this formula is basically the formula which is normally used in order to calculate the specific speed okay of the pump here okay so now just see there are also a classification of the pump based on the specific speed okay so when the specific speed lies between the 80 to 160 rpm then you have to then you have to understand that the centrifugal pump is always a mixed flow type okay so here i can say the centrifugal pump operating between 80 to 160 is nothing but it is a high speed with a mixed flow at the outlet here so option number d will be the correct answer in this case Okay, so next question is at the eye tip of a centrifugal impeller, the blade velocity is 250 meter per second. Okay, at the eye tip of the centrifugal impeller, the blade velocity, blade velocity is given to you as 250 meter per second, while the uniform axial velocity, axial velocity is given to you as 200 meter per second. You have to uh, calculate the inlet Mach number when the sonic velocity is given to you as 300 meter per second. Okay, so just see. Basically, the Mach number is, what is the meaning of Mach number here? Mach number is basically equal to the square root of the ratio of the inertia forces to the elastic forces. And when you simplify this entire relationship, you will get the final form of the Mach number as the velocity of the object to the velocity of the sound here. Okay. So, C is basically the sonic velocity here, I can say. Sonic velocity. Okay. And V is representing the absolute velocity. So in this question, I can say the Mach number is basically equal to, uh, so here you can see C is given to you as 300, okay, and the absolute velocity at the inlet will be equal to 250 square plus 200 square. Why I'm writing it like, like in this way? Because if you draw a velocity triangle, so here in this question, it is given that the axial velocity that it is given to you as 300, uh, sorry, 250 here, uh, sorry, 200 here, it is given to you as 200 here, and this velocity is given to you as 250 here. So here you can see the absolute velocity will be equal to the square uh, square root of, just take a square root of these two terms, 250 square plus 200 square. And if you solve this, you will get the answer as 1.0 something. The option number B will be the correct answer if you calculate this question. Okay, so now let's move to our next question. When a central pump is started and there will be no flow of water until the pressure rise in the impeller is large enough to overcome the... Okay, so just see. Uh, there is a term known as manometric head. That's a very important term actually. Manometric head is representing the net head against which the pump has to do work. Okay, so if the condition of this manometric head is not uh, is not maintained in this case, in, in that case, the flow of water will not take place. Okay, because the pump is not providing sufficient energy to the water that will that will uh, rise the water from the bottom to the top. Okay, so here in this case, when uh, whenever a centrifugal pump is started and there is no flow of water, that means that means the impeller is not providing enough energy to overcome this particular manometric head. So here the option number A will be the correct answer. 
okay this total head is nothing but it is equal to the sum of the static head plus the discharge head okay without considering the losses static head is nothing but it is the defined as the distance between the uh, eye of the pump and to the tail this level okay okay so next question is a centrifugal pump draw too much power a centrifugal pump is a uh, pump draw too much power compared to the design wall it could be due, uh, due to the okay so just see here in this question what is given a centrifugal pump draw too much power compared to the design value okay so just see what does it mean it means basically what is happening here uh, suppose if air is present inside the pump in that case what will happen when you are providing the energy into the pump the pump will not produce enough amount of uh, will not be able to produce the sufficient amount of head to discharge the water here okay sorry uh, will not provide the enough energy or i can say will enough energy to the water to discharge okay so here let us suppose if the air is present inside the system if air is present inside the system and you are supplying some energy the impeller head in that case will become equal to vw2 u2 divided by gh okay so you are supplying so much amount of impeller power into the system but it is not sufficient able to produce the pressure head why so because the air is presenting inside the system and it is producing the pressure head in terms of air only so in order to lift the liquid you have to make sure that the pressure head develop by this impeller power it should be in the form of water only okay that's uh, in that case the, uh, the water will start flowing from the system otherwise the water will not flow okay so here the option number a will be the correct answer okay the next question is the maximum practical suction lift of a for a self priming centrifugal pump okay so just see for a self priming centrifugal pump basically the maximum practical suction lift is equal to 25 feet the option number b will be the correct answer that's a direct uh, question okay you have to just remember that particular condition so these are some of the questions related to the oil india limited exam okay which are very important for your exam point of view so just see uh, this subject is very uh, simple you don't have to uh, take care of that it's a very simple subject you can easily cover that okay so if you have basic idea of the practical devices that how is it operating the only thing is you have to, you have to make sure you have to visualize that how the energy is basically converting into the different different types and that's a very important thing in, in this because if you see in the case of the hydraulic turbine what is happening actually all the, all the hydraulic energy is converting into the kinetic energy and then it is converting into the corresponding what uh, mechanical energy okay so if you are very clear with this concept that how the energy conversion is taking place through each devices then you can easily able to understand the entire hydraulic machine okay so i hope it's very clear to all of you so these are some of the questions okay so uh, so that's it for today's class okay so thank you very much